Welcome back to Normal Baseball. Today we are continuing our top 10s for 2023. Today we have our top 10 designated hitters. Let's get into it. What's going on? Welcome back to Normal Baseball and to yet another Top 10 for 2023. Today we have our Top 10 Designated Hitters in Major League Baseball. I feel like these, this list uh, was probably the hardest, in my opinion, to make. For sure. Um, just based on who is specifically a designated hitter in baseball this season. Um, I think I put together a pretty good list. Do you think your list is pretty good too, Lewis? I think my list is the best there is. Oh, wow. Okay. So we both have our own list. This is not a consensus list. I mean, it could turn out to be that way. You never know. Um, but we have our own lists and we are going to compare them uh, just to see if they're similar, different. Just talk about the top 10 designated hitters in MLB this season, just as advertised. So we're just going to honestly get right into it. Do you want to start, Lewis, or do you want me to start? Oh, yes. I am, I am more than ready to jump right into it. Let's let us let you start us off with your number 10. Okay. Uh, I feel like this is you, you probably would have rather start because of who my number 10 is. Um, my number 10 is a guy we, we love. We love this guy. Um, he is currently not on a roster, technically. Okay. It is. Washington Nationals legend. What do you mean he's not on a roster? Luke the Duke Voigt. Luke Voigt is um, my number 10 on this list. Um, mostly because of the fact that we don't know if he's actually going to be playing that much this season. Uh, he's currently in the Brewers uh, spring, training, um, spring training camp. So we'll see what happens there. He, I believe, was a non-roster invitee to spring training. Yes. Um, so like I said, he's not on a roster right now. Um, but I'm excited to see if he can break the, the 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 camp and be part of this roster on opening day. And I think he should because Luke the Duke Voigt is a different breed. Uh, last season, between the Padres and the Nationals, um, he played in 135 games he hit 22 home runs, 22 doubles, batted 226, yes, but at a 710 OPS. Um, just an overall solid bat to have in the lineup, especially at your DH position, which um, you can move him around to first and, and DH, depending on where you need him for what day. I think he's a really valuable uh, DH and a big bat that has potential to be even better. We saw how he was in the shortened season in 2020. Um, and how he was in 2021. Um, we'll see what he can do if he does wind up breaking camp with the Brewers this season. All so, right, all right. Luke I Voigt like was it. at my number ten. Yeah, Luke Voigt is actually my uh, my number one. <laughs> no, Luke Voigt definitely deserves to be on this list, and I can understand exactly why you put him there. Did he crack your list? No. Whoa, whoa, fake fan. We got hey, a fake hey, fan hey, here. Hey, 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 escort this man out. <laughs> escort this man out. Fake. F oh, that's. That shocks me. I put him there. I will admit, I, I can be one to admit, my main source for putting him on this list was because we are Luke Voigt fans. Oh, yeah, of course. And I was having a little difficulty about who like was was actual DHs and so who I, I think will be DHing a lot this season. So I figured, you know what? Screw it. Instead of finding a 10th guy, I'll put Luke Voigt because I truly do believe... Um, he is a top 10 DH in this league when, you know, when he's actually on a team. I think it's kind of criminal that he's not on the team. And I think the main reason is that just a lot of guys have, a lot of teams have first baseman and he wants to be on a good team. We saw that with the Nationals. He just hated being in Washington. He wanted to play for a good team. Eric Hosmer ruined his career. Um, so I think Luke Boyd is, is very valuable. So he is my, my number 10. Yeah, not to mention, sure. not to mention... Uh, sprint speed six percentile, so the man has That's, wheels. It's a demon time speed. No, but in all in Some all reality, some may call him the modern day Ghost Rider. 
in all reality, he hits the ball really hard. Um, he can actually walk. He walks a lot, so that's always a valuable thing to have uh, in a hitter, especially in a, in a DH. Um, and, yeah, I just think Luke Voigt all around a very good player. Yeah. All right. I can understand that at your number 10 spot. I really like the pick. D- didn't crack your list is crazy to me. Yep. So I, I guess I'll do my number 10 now. Yeah, go for it. At number 10, this one's going to get controversial quick. Are you ready? No, oh, no. At my number 10, I have Uncle Larry, Andrew McCutcheon of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Not controversial. Uh, of course, they do have Carlos Santana currently penciled in a DH on fan drafts for the Pittsburgh Pirates. However, uh, definitely do think with how many young outfielders the Pirates can have at the major league level, they're going to try to give them as much run as possible, which would put Andrew McCutcheon into their DH spot. He, he's still good. Still good. Definitely uh, still was in the 90 percentile of sprint speed, which is always a good sign. He had an expected batting average of 252 last season. That was taken away a little bit just by um, by by shifts and uh, unfortunate catches, especially, I don't know, there was, I believe one diving catch was made by, uh, was it Harrison Bader, I think, in center field, which just an absolutely amazing Taking catch. one hit away. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying that the, de- the defense was part of it. It was not like he was just shifted against Major League. And I really think that we're in for another good Uncle Larry season back in Pittsburgh. Um, just all in all, looking forward to it. Go, 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 Andrew McCutcheon. I think that's fair. Um, he did play a lot of games in um, left uh, uh, at DH last season, so mm-hmm. I think that is very fair to say. Um, I think he will be DHing a good bit for the uh, Pirates this season because, like you said, they do have a lot of young guys that they want to give some run. Um, I think he will be DHing a lot, maybe not as much as last season, but we definitely will see him there. And considering how kind of difficult it was to find guys who either were DHing a lot last year, DHed most of their games last year, or will be DHing most of their games this year, I feel like that is a fair assessment to make at your number 10. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, that sums up Andrew McCutcheon for me. You want to jump into your number 9? My number 9... Andrew McCutcheon didn't crack my list, by the way. So, mm-hmm. so far, we are even at number 10s who didn't crack each other's lists. My number 9 is a guy who some people might disagree with. Some people might not like the fact that I have him listed as a DH. But um, it's Justin Turner from the Bo- the Boston Red Sox. I almost said Baltimore Red Sox. I don't know. From the Boston Red Sox. Um, I think with Raphael Devers as their third baseman. He, Justin Turner is not going to be playing third base. Um, yes, maybe on the off days, but again, Raphael Devers doesn't have too many off days. Um, I think we'll be seeing Justin Turner a lot at DH because, yes, you can put him at second or even first if you need, but I think we'll be seeing him a lot at DH, so I'm, I'm expecting that from him this season. Um, last season, yes, he's 37 years old. Um, rather, he's 38 now, um, but last season, he still batted 276. Um, 13 homers, 36 doubles. At, uh, when you're when you're 37 years old, is is very very good. Um, you cannot take away his credit for that. He had a 123 WRC plus, so he was just all around a really really good player last season. And I think we are going to see him um, in the DH spot more this upcoming season. All right, all right, I like it. I like it. Justin was he Turner. on your list? He was not on my list. Did not crack your list. Okay, interesting. So it's funny because we're saying, yeah, we can't, we couldn't really find too many guys that fit the criteria for DH that we thought or just kind of who we putting together this list. But so far, our bottom two are not the same. Correct. So, and you at least have one other guy on this list that I didn't have. So I'm interested to see who that next guy is. Um, and yeah, so my pick, Justin Turner at my number nine spot. All right, I like it, I like it. As for my number nine spot, I had uh, Matt Carpenter of the San Diego Padres. I like it. Last season, before he sadly had a foot injury, he was batting 305 with a 1.138 OPS, with a 217 OPS plus. Technically finished with a higher OPS than AL MVP Aaron Judge. Not technically, he didn't qualify. But he did finish with it. 
His OPS Plus finished at 217. He looked really good. He averaged less than a strikeout a game last season, which over the course of the prior seasons, before that he was uh, very much so a swing and miss guy and a strikeouts guy. Uh, looking forward to seeing what he can do, especially I think he'll be put more towards the bottom of the Padres lineup. It'll be a lot of fun to see what he does this upcoming season, especially if he is going to be DHing and if he does have all of that power and hitting capabilities still left in the tank. I I agree. I think I think Matt Carpenter has a lot uh, still left in him. I think he has that potential there. Um, I I would be a little worried about like if last season was just kind of a bright spot because like before last season, before he joined the Yankees. There's a reason that he was not on a roster. The Yankees took a flyer on him, and it just really, really worked out. They made some changes. I'm interested to see if he can keep those changes. Yeah. Um, he did not crack my list, mm -hmm. but mainly because of my number eight spot, I have Nelson Cruz, who I think will be the Padres DH this season. I, I don't think we'll see Matt Carpenter at that DH spot as much as you think, because Nelson Cruz is going to be playing majority of the games at DH for the Padres. Um, I think Matt Carpenter will more be slotted in towards right field, uh, right field, left field, like depending on who has off days or who just like what lineup they decide to go with that day. I do think we'll see him at DH. So I think that's a fair person to put at DH, but I had Nelson Cruz coming in at my number eight spot last season. Yes. Um, bad year. He had 10 home runs in 124 games. And when you're a guy like Nelson Cruz, you are basically on the team to hit home runs. Um, batted 234. Um, I think this upcoming season, he will do a lot better. He had an eye surgery over the off season, which, you know, that means... You last... love talking about that eye surgery. Why wouldn't I? That means last season, he wasn't seeing the ball well um so you can only imagine how good he'll be this season when he actually can see the ball coming out of the pitcher's hands better um I think I think I'm opt I'm very optimistic towards Nelson Cruz this season I think he'll definitely have a much better season than last year I mean the guy has 459 home runs in his career he he's going to hit home runs he's going to be on the Padres to just drive in runs and um, I think that's exactly what he'll do. And I have Nelson Cruz in my number eight. You can even argue that that's low. But just considering his age, he is now 42. So taking that into consideration, um, I, I did put him lower just in case, you know, there is that part of me that thinks, you know, he could not have a good year this season. All right. All right. He was uh, my number eight. Oh, who's your nine? My nine was Justin Turner. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, so we're up to my number eight, right? Yeah, you're number eight. So nothing has been the same so far. Yeah, yeah, nothing has been did the same Did you have Nelson so Cruz on your list? I did not. So nothing's been the same so far. Okay. Yeah. Who's your number eight? My number eight, a uh, guy who I'm very high on, and if you listen to some of our will bees, you'll definitely hear me speak about him. I have Julio Daniel Martinez, otherwise known as Just Doubles Martinez, otherwise known as J.D. Martinez, coming in at my number eight spot. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do being in Dodger blue. It'll be a lot of fun to watch him within that lineup. He's, I mean, like I just said, he's just doubles Martinez. I'm really looking forward to seeing him put together hopefully another 40-plus double season. He looked really solid last season and the season before that in 2021, both all-star appearances for him. Uh, last season, finished this season with a 274 batting average, a 790 OPS, and a 117 OPS+. plus. I, I do think that we need to see him uh, accept his walks. Most of his uh, putouts from last season came from when he had three balls in the count. He wasn't really fully willing to accept them for the most part. However, I think uh, if anybody's going to fix him, it would be the Dodgers organization in that sense. And, you know, let's just, let's just see him do the damn thing. And let's not forget... Still one of the league's most elite fastball hitters. He had over 320 against fastballs last season. Yeah, I had J.D. Martinez at my number seven spot. So I had him one above where you put him. Um, I would agree with everything. I mean, he's just, he's changed as a player. He's gotten into more of that, uh, I'm going to just hit the ball as, much, as many times as I can. I'm not really looking for home runs. I'm just going to hit it. Like you said, just doubles Martinez. He's just kind of... 
he's just hitting doubles. Um, he quite literally does the damn thing. 43 doubles. I would honestly, yes, I love him. I love that he is now focusing, doing a lot of with batting average and just trying to make contact. But you can't really deny that he did still get worse last season. Mm -hmm. um, comparatively to all his other years, his home runs were down, obviously, which, like I said, yes, he was not looking for home runs, but only 16 home runs. His batting average was only 274. And I say only, but when you compare that to his other previous seasons, that like the prime of his career, uh, the prime of his career, we know he can be better. I think a big differentiation that I'm just looking at um, from this season or from last season to his 21, 21 season, which his 2021 season was better than last season. Um, in his 2021 season, he hit 297 off breaking balls and 312 off off-speed pitches. In 2022, he hit 220 off breaking balls and 211 off off-speed pitches. So he is just hunting fastballs. Um, like you said, yes, he did bat 220, or 320, uh, 323 on fastballs this season. Um, but the off speeds, he's just not hitting them. I just think it mainly boils down to the fact that he's not even looking for them. He is just simply, I am looking for fastballs. I want to hit a fastball. Um, I think that's what his approach at the plate has kind of morphed into over the past season. So I'm interested to see what kind of approach he has this year, if he's still just hunting fastball, um, or if he's going to be kind of being more diverse again and looking for off speeds and breaking pitches. Um, we know he's a big guy of watching film during the game, seeing what he can improve on. Um, so I'd like to see him probably be able to hit more pitch types a little bit more this season rather than just hunting fastballs. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to... We'll have to see how he does this upcoming season, but certainly looking forward to watching him play. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fair. Um, J.D. Martinez came in at my number seven spot, like I said. So who was your number seven then? My number seven, and this is where we're going to get into a little bit of controversy here. At number seven, I had to tell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. I put him here just because I do think that the Diamondbacks are going to put a uh, younger rookie in at the second base position. Who? His name is Blaze Alexander. Now, if that's not a fucking kick-ass name, I don't know what is. I'm really looking forward to watching him play, but this is about to tell Marte right now. Last season, not too good. 240 batting average, had a 727 OPS, a 106 OPS+. plus. I'm looking forward to him maybe having a little bit of a rebound. I want to see him drop his, his strikeout percentage to really help the lineup just move the chains type of thing. And I think he'll benefit, actually not I think, I know he'll benefit from the banning of the shift. And I do think that he will provide plenty of opportunities to this Diamondbacks lineup that honestly looks much better than people thought. You're right. We are in a little bit of conflict here because I, by no means do I classify Cattell Marte as a DH. I'm and talking I talking about this season. Yeah, I get. I, I I understand what you're saying. By no means do I quantify him as a DH this season. Yep. And by no means do I think he should be in any list. So I'm going to very much disagree. I don't even think that's even close to being what's going to happen to Cattell Marte this season. Right. If anything, he will be in the outfield, and Lourdes Gurriel will be DHing because he is also an outfielder. He can play outfield. We've seen him do it. Um, don't see him at, at all as a DH. I think that is a very big stretch to make, um, and I just don't see it happening. So I'm going to very much disagree with that. Um, I know you said we're getting controversial, but I don't know. What's your basis on, on him not playing second this season? What's your basis on Blaze Alexander? Like, did he have a, an amazing season last year? Well, I'll, I'll read you the numbers, and then you tell me what you think. 301 batting average, a 929 OPS. But this is in AAA. Well, it's across three different leagues, so he can do it. I'm going three different to... leagues. That's even worse. No, that's even better. Three like double A, triple A, single A, low A, uh, rookie ball, high A, uh, rookie ball, double A, missed high A completely, and then triple A, where he had 38 walks, 102 strikeouts, 20 homers, 60. I mean, 59 RBIs with 10 stolen bases. Over the course of 98 games. 
I think this guy's the real deal. I want him to be playing uh, second base for them, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm going to completely dispute this and say that he has played seven games in AAA total. So they're putting, they're putting, he's going to be starting the season in AAA. I think he'll stay there. Um, even if he comes up, like I said, Cattell Marte will play outfield before they DH, DH him every day. Um, so I'm going to very much disagree. And I honestly, I just, I, I think that's kind of outrageous. I think that was, you're saying controversial. Yes, it is controversial. I just think it's wrong in general. I don't think Cattell Marte will be playing. He's not a D, he's not going to be a DH this season. We're not going to be looking back at the 2023 season and be like, oh yeah, Cattell Marte was the Diamondbacks DH. That I don't think that's going to happen. But, All right, well, uh, again, another one that we'll just have to wait and see. I know that it might be controversial, but I'm gonna. Uh, that's where I think he ends up during the season. I, 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 I can't believe that. Anyway, uh, we'll just move on to, for the sake of, of not continuously getting into this. Um, uh, we'll move on to my number six, which my number six um, might come to a surprise for some people. I don't think necessarily you'll be too surprised, Lewis. Uh, my number six, I have Jesse Winker mm. of the... Um, sorry. I have Jesse Winker of the Milwaukee Brewers um, coming in at number six on my list. Yes, he had a very down year last season, um, batted 219 in 136 games with a below 700 OPS. Um, I, I think he'll bounce back and he'll be the Jesse Winker that we saw in 2021 that can hit above 300 and have a 950 OPS, I think. I think we'll see him bounce back to that place. There was a lot of things going around last season about him just not liking Seattle, having a lot of mental problems, and and just not being in the right place in Seattle. So I'm I'm interested to see what he'll do this season when hopefully he's feeling a little bit better in Milwaukee. Um, hopefully he's in a better headspace and we can see him return to that player that he was on the Reds. Um, so I do have optimism for him. I think he will be DHing a lot this season. Um, and yeah, Jesse Winker comes in at my my number six. All right. What do you, did he crack your list? He did not crack my list. We have very different lists. We do. We do. We have very very different lists. I, I think that is. I I don't. I'm a little surprised you don't have Jesse Winker on there because I know you're a big Jesse Winker guy. I do. I do not. I am a big Jesse Winker guy. I will be rooting for him heavily this upcoming season. However, just uh, did not think that he was able to crack my list. Then it's that simple. Okay. Right. I mean, I I'm I'm more of on the optimism side uh, of this this coin. Uh, yes, he struck out a lot last season. He walked a little bit more. Um, just yes, there's no denying it was a bad year. Um, but I have the optimism for him, and I think he will get back up to that place. Um, especially in a, in a more—I um, don't want to say more fun organization because the Mariners is a fun organization. But uh, an organization like the Brewers that have some guys, you know, we got Yelich. Um, he's, he's he's got some guys out there that he um, hopefully has more fun with and can just continue to uh, be himself and play to the best of his abilities. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. Uh, As for my number six, uh, should I, should I go ahead? Go for it. My number six, I have Josh Bell, newly acquired to the Cleveland Guardians back again. Josh Bell, really looking forward to seeing what he can put together after a 2022. That is definitely the tale of two parts. Uh, in the first half of 2022, he played with the Nationals, where he hit 301 with an 877 OPS and a 153 OPS+. plus. However, after the trade went through and he went to the San Diego Padres, his production fell off a cliff. He started hitting 192 with a 587 OPS and a 75 OPS+. plus. Really want him to bounce back, uh, and part of that bounce back could be attributed to uh, the shift ban. Now, he will not get some of those hits taken away from him, which is a very good sign. And the one thing that I want him to do going into next season is, especially being on the Guardians lineup, where a single is just as valuable as a triple sometimes for them, take your walks a little bit more. Don't strike out as much, you know, really have a good plate discipline and good patience at the plate. And I think we'll see a very, very good version of Josh Bell. I like it. Um, I didn't have Josh Bell on my list for the sole reason, and I feel like this is fair. I had him on my first base list. Yep. 
which uh, is just simply based on more of opinion. Like, I see him more as a first baseman in my head. That's fair. So I put him on my first base list rather than um, on my DH list. So I, I like it. And certainly if I thought of him as a DH more than a first baseman, I would have him uh, on my list. All right. But he just didn't crack it for me this, this year. I got you. Sounds good. So All I believe fair. now we're both in our top five. We are both in our top five, yeah. All right, so uh, do you have, want to give I've, us a number five? Yeah, sure. Your number five, my apologies. Or do you want to give us your number five? Go ahead. You go for it. Go for it. Give us your number five. My number five, I have John Carlos Stanton of the New York Yankees. He did face some injuries last season, but he still hit 30 homers. Not entirely the John Carlos Stanton that we know and love him to be. However, I do think that we are in for a very, very good 2023 campaign out of him. Last season, he finished with a 211 batting average with a with a 113 OPS plus. Uh, I do think that he needs to find a way to be more patient at the plate, especially with two strikes. Uh, he had a 127 batting average when falling behind in the count or having two strikes on him. So. He definitely needs to figure out something there, but if there's anybody who can make an adjustment, it is former MVP John Carlos Stanton. Yeah, I had John Carlos Stanton on my number four, so you, I had him just one above you. Um, I, I think, I think John Carlo, yes, had a down year like we mentioned, but he still had thirty home runs, thirty-one home runs to be exact, um, in only one hundred and ten games. So I think while his average was down, I think he can get it right back up. I just think it was a matter of just didn't have a great year with seeing the ball at the plate, like like was mentioned. Um, and I am very optimistic for Giancarlo Stanton this season, him being the Yankees DH. I think he'll we'll see him in the field a little bit, but I think primarily, of course, as he has the past few seasons, he will be primarily at, at DH. Yep. Um, All Star Game MVP John Carlos Stanton, not True. to mention. True. So we'll see. We'll see what Game MVP. we'll see what he can get done this season. I'm very excited. Um, John Carlos Stanton was at my number four. All right. All right. So that means I didn't do. I skipped past my number five. Yeah. Um, I'll say my number five now. My number five was. I I know you. I don't know if you'll have him on your list. My number five is Eloy Jimenez of the Chicago White Sox. Do not have him on my list. Assumed. I know you hate Eloy Jimenez. Um, I had him on my left field list too, yes. But um, now that I think about it, he I do think of him more as a DH and Andrew Benintendi is their left fielder, which is just a fact. Um, Lewis, I know you hate Eloy Jimenez, but in the 84 games that he was able to play last season, he hit 295 with an 858 OPS and 16 home runs. So if you average that out to a full season, that's 32 homers, still batting uh, 300, not to mention he had 12 doubles. So just an all-around really, really good hitter when healthy. It's just more of can he stay healthy for the full season because that is something we haven't seen from him quite yet. Okay. Okay. Do you want to you, you want to dispute nothing. me? Why not? Absolutely nothing. Why not? Come on. I'll let I'll let his lack of play speak for itself. So you just you, you just didn't have him just because you don't think he'll stay healthy. I don't believe in him. What in what way? I don't think so. He was part of uh, was he part of the Chris Sale trade uh, with the Red Sox? Let me hang on, fact check myself before I sound stupid. He was not actually no, okay. but well, definitely either way, definitely yeah. still Eloy Jimenez. I just don't think that he is worth being on a top 10 I don't think that he is good enough to be considered a top 10 hitter in baseball he definitely needs to stay healthy like you mentioned but you know we'll, we'll see what happens so then hypothetically when healthy do you think he is a top no. 10 no that's just ridiculous that's ridiculous that's you being that's you being just you just hate him you just hate the guy you just hate the guy I admit you hate Eli Jimenez I fucking hate Eloy Jimenez, but that has nothing to do with why he's not on my top ten list. No, but I'm saying when healthy, even even when healthy, you don't think no. he cracked. So say he had that full season last year, he had 32 home runs, he batted 300, 32 home runs, batted 300 with an 850 OPS. You don't think he's in your top ten DHs? But the question is, did he? That's not what I'm asking. I'm saying hypothetically, would he still be? 
That's but what I'm saying. In a full season, do you think he's a top 10 DH? But you're throwing out numbers that didn't happen. Okay, then fine. I won't throw out numbers that didn't happen. I'll say, in a full season, if he plays the way he did last season, whatever your numbers for may be, but I'm saying, if he plays like he did for half of last season, if he does that over the full course of the year, do you think he's a top 10 DH? Probably not. That's ridiculous. That, that stems from your hatred of Eloy Jimenez, in my opinion. It does not, but... Whatever you would like to say to make yourself feel better. That is what I'd like to say, because that, I don't know. Because if, if you take if you take what he did last year and just duplicate it to a full season, it's very very good. And I think uh, staying healthy is going to be a big thing for him. And let's let's be let's remember, he did get injured by playing the field. So if he is a DH, he will not be playing the field. He's just simply swinging the bat. So I am optimistic for Eloy Jimenez. It's a guy that I love and, and you hate. So I like the, the little yin yang we, we got going on here. So I have Eloy Jimenez in my number five. All right. All right. So for my... So you're up to your four now? Yes. And you are on your top three, correct? Yeah, I'm in my top three. I've done my All four right. and five. So yeah. You're so four. my number four is the guy who we have disputed throughout this entire uh, process of doing top tens. I have George Springer as my number four DH. He had one of the most consistent bats in baseball last year. Kind of flew under the radar. Felt like whatever you needed him to do, he could get done at the plate. Not so much a true DH in the sense of a strictly power hitter, but certainly one that contributed a lot. Had exactly 100 strikeouts while having a 267 batting average and an 814 OPS with a 131 OPS+. plus. I am looking forward to seeing how he plays... Uh, in another full season with Toronto last season. It was an all-star. He looked really good. Uh, he will benefit from the shift ban. He was shifted against 60% of the time. And, of course, you cannot ignore just how simply offensively talented George Springer is. Go look at his savant page. It's just littered with dark red circles. So, George Springer, my number four. Again, we've debated this throughout all of our outfielder lists. So, not yeah. too much to say. Yeah, not on my list. Just because I don't see him as a DH, and that's really what it boils down to. So I'm not going to get too much into that. I just personally don't see him as a DH. All right. um, so we're both in our top threes now. Top threes now. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? You want to go first? Go ahead. I'll, I'll go first. So my top three for my number three spot for DHs. Um, he won't be playing for a little bit this season, but I have Bryce Harper. I also have Bryce Harper at my three. I think it's undeniable. Yes, he won't be playing for the this season, uh, the beginning half of it. I certainly think when he does come back, he will be DHing again because his arm won't be fully ready. It'll be ready to swing, but I don't know if it'll be ready to throw the ball all that much. Um, we'll see him at DH last season. Um, he also missed a lot of time because of a elbow injury, which is what led him to getting Tommy John surgery, which is why he's going to going to be out for the first uh, good portion of the season. Um, he played 99 games last year, though, and uh, batted 286 with an 877 OPS. He had 18 home runs and 28 doubles. Um, just all around had a great season last year, considering he only played 99 games. Um, not to mention what he did in the postseason. Um, in the postseason for the Phillies, he, he hit... Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but in in most of the series, he hit 400, 500, batted 300 over for the postseason. Um, he had a total you of... You his postseason numbers? Yeah, he had a six home runs last postseason. Yep. Um, so he's just, he's having a great time. Yeah. And I love Bryce Harper. I always have. I've always been a very big Bryce Harper fan. I like what he's able to do on the field. Um, not only that, but he's fast. And I think when he does play the outfield, he can be a very plus defensive outfielder. Am I saying that he is? No, not necessarily, because we haven't seen him play the outfield in now over a year. Um, but I think with what he does with the bat, which is what this is based on, um, as a designated hitter, just he is uh, top of the top. So Bryce Harper came in at my number three. All right, all right. Bryce Harper also came in at my number three. Like you mentioned, his playoff stats where he absolutely went nuclear. Had a three forty nine batting average, 13 RBI, 6 home runs, and 12 runs scored throughout the entirety of the postseason and the Phillies' World Series run. Looked really, really good last season. 
Uh, of course, he will be injured for a good part of this upcoming season. However, when he comes back, I think that there's no denying that he will slot in perfectly at three and could genuinely be two or one by the end of the season. Yeah, it is a Jeff, definite. It is a definite possibility. Um, I hope he comes back sooner rather than later. Yep, agreed. he's fun to watch when he when he's playing for sure. So do, now we're in our top twos. Yep, which I. They should be the same. Do we want to recap our list really quick? No. Yes, they definitely will be the same. I think we should recap our list really, I don't think that we should. really quick, just to refresh. Um, fine, we won't. We won't. Cause we you... do it at the end of the episode. Okay, fine. Fine. All right, so... Who's your number two? My number two, who I would hope is also your number two, is Shohei Otani of the Los Angeles Angels. Also my number two, yes. He's a DH who could win a Cy Young. Yeah, we, we aren't taking the Cy Young part into account here, though. We're just taking DH. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're but, just taking but the I, offensive I, stats. Unicorn, he's the unicorn. Yeah, he. I mean, he could have won MVP last season had it not been for an historical. Had it not been for an historical Aaron Judge season, he is one of the most dangerous hitters in the league when stepping into the box. I'm looking forward to to seeing, and hopefully, me saying this is not bad karma out there in the world. I'm looking forward to him hopefully batting close to, if not over, 300 this season. I think that this is the season where he genuinely pulls it all together and shows that he can win an MVP and a Cy Young. And part of that MVP award is obviously going to have to be the offensive production. Yeah, we'll see. Um, His offensive production did take a step down last season. I still think, even with that step down, he is... An incredible hitter. His average went up. His power went down a little bit. So like you said, you know, it's not too outlandish to say he might bat 300 next season because he has been working on just hitting the ball before just trying to hit home runs. Um, He struck out less last season. Um, In more games, too, he struck out a lot less. Um, I'm just, I, all around amazing player. He has speed. He, He can hit the ball for power. He can hit triples. He can hit a ball in the gap for a double. He can just kind of do it all, and he is an extremely valuable piece to no matter what team he is on. Um, So Shohei Otani, I love the guy, and I think he will. We've seen 2021 was his amazing year hitting. 2022 was his amazing year pitching. This year, hopefully he combines them and does both at an elite, elite level, and I think Shohei Otani is my number two DH, and I think that's, that's fair to say. All right, all right. I like it. I like it. So, do you want me to give my number one now? Yes. So, Shohei was both our number twos, and I know for a fact this is both our number ones. It's Jordan Alvarez of the Houston Astros. The guy is simply, he's a guy. He's a stud. 25 years old last season. He played in 135 games, batted 306 with 37 home runs and a 1.019 OPS. Um, it's just incredible. He literally just hits the ball and he can't stop and he won't stop. Um, he, every time he comes up to the plate, there is fear struck in pitchers and opposing fans heart. Um, just everything about Jordan is, is incredible. Um, all around, you can make the argument that he will be playing left field a lot, but we, uh, we did a little poll and it was um, determined in voting that he will be a, mostly a DH this season. Um, so I put him on my DH list, and by all means necessary, he took that number one spot by a lot. By a lot. Um, he is 100th percentile, get ready for this, 100th percentile in average exit velocity, hard hit percent, ex- expected slug- slugging, expected batting average, uh, expected WOBA, barrel percentage, and he's 99th percent in max exit velocity. Just all red on his baseball savant page. He hits the ball hard. He hits home runs. He does exactly what a DH does, and he also hits 300 batting average. Yeah, you're on sure. Alvarez. You're on Alvarez. I mean, literally, I can I can show you Alex in my notes. Just go ahead and read the only sentence that I put down for Jordan Alvarez. You wrote, "He is him. Simple." Most potential... Powerful. Oh, most powerful and feared hitter is what you wrote. Um, And that's all that I have to say about Jordan Alvarez. Everything that Alex said is also true. He is genuinely a -a one-of-a-kind type of hitter. 
crazy to think that the Astros uh, had traded for him from the Dodgers just in a random, what could have been meaningless trade, is now uh, just one of the best trades in all of Houston Astros history. Yeah, 6'5", 245, he comes, uh, 225, he comes in at listed. Um, one of the most, like you said, most valuable trades in Astros history. Um, we can't even forget to mention what he did in the postseason last year. Hit that walk-off home run against Robbie Ray. He hit the big, he hit the home run that won the Astros the World Series in Game 6. Uh, that three-run home run to dead center field that was absolutely demolished. Um, he was just, he's a big part of this Astros team. He will continue to be. And that is why he comes in at number one on my list. And, uh, like you said, he is him and he is feared by most pitchers in baseball. This is true. Um, yeah. Jordan Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez. Can we give a round of applause to Jordan Alvarez? <laughs> Doing all this at only 25 years old. Um, what a guy. So... That was our list. Let's recap them really quick, and then we'll get going. Let us know what you agreed with and disagreed with on our lists, um, and let us know what your exact top ten list would be in the comments. Uh, Lewis, do you want to give us your list? Yes, of course. So my designated, my top ten designated hitters list going into the 2023 season looks like at 10, Andrew McCutcheon, 9, Matt Carpenter, 8, J.D. Martinez, 7, Cattell Marte, Six, Josh Bell. Five, John Carlos Stanton. Four, George Springer. Three, Bryce Harper. Two, Shohei Otani. And one, Jordan Alvarez. Love it. Love it. My top ten was looking like Luke Voigt at number ten. Luke the Duke. Uh, Justin Turner at number nine. Nelson Cruz at number eight. J.D. Martinez at number seven. Jesse Winker at number six. Eloy Jimenez at number five. Giancarlo Stanton at number four, Bryce Harper at number three, Shohei Otani at number two, and Jordan Alvarez at number one. Let's give a round of applause to all the DHs that made our lists. <laughs> Rather, all the players that made our lists. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to comment, share, subscribe, follow um and we really appreciate it we appreciate you if you're listening right now um and we will see you guys in the next top 10 list which we're winding down it is going to be starting pitchers all right peace